this blank buster um it's some fly it's got a load of key attributes it just worked really really well and it works good to still water but it also works amazingly effectively on the river um for brownies and rainbows if your liver happens to have rainbows in it um i first used it over in the czech republic on the vid lava but it's a simple fly but one that's got other attributes um that trout find really really attractive so I'm starting my jig hooking device. As you can see, this is not a small jig hook. This is a size 8. And I've got a 3.5 mil copper tungsten bead on there. Now the whole point of that is um, fishing the fly so that it fishes upside down, if you can imagine. The way the, the tip is tethered to that jig hook. It's just perfect and I can bounce it along the bottom. It's got lots of movement with the materials that I'm using in it. And, um, that's really the key to it, but also the other key is the contrasting colours. We all know just how effective black and green is for um, predatory fish, uh, brownies especially. But yeah, that, that bead, it gives it the weight and it allows you to fish it in that up and down jigging motion. Um, great across the river, or like I say, it's in still waters. So I've just bedded the bead in there with some thread wraps. I'm going to catch my first lot of marabou in the tail here. Now you'll notice, I see a lot of streamers, no streamers, lures, sorry. See I nip the tail off there. So the tail is like twice the length of the body. I see a lot of lures with really long tails. That's fine if you've got a hook in there, a little stinger. However, what I will say, brownies especially, did I put a long tail in the fly because I'll nip in it. So I've now got this black, it's like a glister dubbing, just jet black. So your jet back glister, I'm going to dub that onto the hook shank. Nice tight rope. And bind up sort of halfway. That's your start there. I'm going to do another bunch of maru. This time a little bit thicker. And obviously it's going to be longer because it's going to come. The tips are going to marry up with the tail. That's what we're looking for. I've got a bigger bunch there. Marry these tips up with the tail. And then tie that in. Nice tight wraps. Strong thread, 8 0 thread, solid. So you can see I've got a wing and a tail, but they combine. And that just gives you an additional movement. Uh, the two lots of marabou there. Two separate bits of marabou. Again, back in with the glister. Um, black dubbing. We've got to spin that on up to a point just behind the bead of the hook shank. You see, I don't mind going through the, the dubbing there on my thread. I've got to pull some of that out later. So just whip finish here. And then brush some of the, the glister, uh, spectre, whatever black dubbing you've got. Seals work as well, will work as well, but I like the properties with the man made fibres. And just brush some of that fibre through the, the wing and the tail. So I've got to tie off at this point. Because I want to use a different colour thread. I'm going to come in, I'm going to use some chartreuse here. Obviously, depending on the hackle that you're putting in the flat, you can just do a black hackle. Um, really, really good, solid, solid colour. Um, but I'm going to use chartreuse, so chartreuse thread. Give myself a little working area. And I'm going to create a loop here because I'm going to do a dubbing loop with some fur. So I'll create my little loop and keep my, my dubbing, my dubbing, sorry, my bobbing out of the way. So to spin the loop, I'm just going to open it, catch it in my loop spinner. And I've got here chartreuse rubbing, it's quite long in the fibre. And I really don't need a lot of this stuff. Um, probably about an inch, inch and a half. So I just use my, my hair pliers and I'll catch the length that I want on the strip, keeping it on the strip. And by holding that up with gravity, I'll just cut through with the scissors and the skin will drop. And I'll just tap that on the desk, open my pliers up just to get everything nice and even so I've got a line to work with. And I'm going to catch that in my dubbing loop. Always 
run a little bit of moisture. I wet my finger and run it along the dub and it just makes everything adhere that much better. So move your fibers, your rabbit fibers, to where you want them, lengthwise, for your color. And then obviously spin them in the loop to lock everything in place. Give it a wee ruffle, make sure everything's nice and tight. And then we just got to wind it up. Now, when I'm winding it, I want to stroke the fibers back as well, just like I would with Fritz or hackling a fly. Basically a hackle, but it's a dubbing loop with fur rather than a feather. But it just gives great mobility, a great trigger. Um, like I say, black and green is a killer combination for trout. Predatory fish in general. And just lock that off with some thread wraps before snipping the loop. And finally, just moisten my fingers a little bit. I'll stroke everything back so I can tidy up behind the bead to create a nice little collar. Just to keep it tidy. I dare say it doesn't need it a bit. Um, I like a bit of neatness on my flies. Coming in with finish. So they're nice and even, top, middle and bottom. And then just snip that off there. And there he is, Blank Buster. Just a devastating fly, whether it be river or lake. Um, the additional weight allowing you to jig it up and down. The black and green colour combination. And obviously that long mobile tail with a hackle in there. Just a really good fly. Great to be fishing a sinking line, but also on a floating line. Fishes up tight, upside down like that, so long straw draws on the floater, and it'll jig that fly, bouncing it along the bottom. Absolutely killer. Really enticing to any predatory fish. That's a blank buster. I really hope you enjoyed that video. Please subscribe to my channel for more fly tying videos and fishing videos. Uh, hopefully you'll find more in there that you like. Take care folks. Bye bye.